you know, Marianne Williamson was probably the least, the, the name I was expecting to hear, I was not expecting at all. And w- someone I'm really familiar with and who wrote a book, which is escaping me at this moment, but it transformed my life because as I've said on this podcast before, her book was the realization that fear and love were the two components in the world and that there were a bunch of people who my yoga teacher, religious people, um, Eckhart Tolle, who were acting a certain way. And I didn't know why they were acting that way. But it was after reading the book that I realized they were all acting with love. And it transformed everything for me. So what's been your history with Marianne Williamson? And, and what's your history with spirituality? Huge question, but I'm sure no, you please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my, my intersection with Marianne Williamson has been somewhat glancing. I've read a couple of her books. I have one on my shelf right behind me here. Um, but she's been, you know, one, she's had a relatively small, small role in my uh, spiritual development, at least as far as what sort of, you know, content I've, I've consumed for that. Um, I, I'm the grandson of Holocaust survivors. And I grew up in a Jewish agnostic uh, household, you know, very secular. I was in Ohio. So if you write Jew Ohio on an envelope, it would find its way to my house. <laughs> and uh, I have to, I, I admit, I stole that from, you know, Jerry Seinfeld or something. I have to, you know, give credit for good jokes like that. Um, I hope I gave it to the right person. In any case, I grew up in this agnostic household and never even really thought about spirituality until I became a George Carlin fan and heard George Carlin just ripping on the hypocrisies of religion and the church and all that. Yeah, there's a there's an invisible man living in the sky and you have he has a list of things he does not want you to do. And if you do any of them, he will throw you into a lake of fire forever, but he loves you. And for 12 year old me, I was just like, all right, that makes sense. I guess I'm an atheist. <laughs> and I rode that line of logic pretty hard until I was maybe 17 or so. And I've been doing a lot of personal development stuff. Uh, I was involved in what later came to be called the seduction community. Um, and so Neil Strauss, the game. Honest, I was, I was, years before that wow i'm I'm a little i'm a little proud i was super 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 before that gotcha um i'm talking david d'angelo double your dating and stuff like that and other obscure things that you know a few people are going to laugh at um so i've been doing a lot of a lot of personal development and psychology and and what what i learned from the seduction community the ultimate thing that i learned was that um a good relationship partner isn't a set of tactics. It's something that emanates from you. It's something that is a, is a byproduct of having your own stuff together. And there's a lot of deep questions involved in that. Who am I really? How do, what does it mean to be authentic? And those questions have infinitely deep answers. And as an atheist, I found myself walking over the cliff of spirituality. And I didn't even realize it. Um, and you know, I was, it it was, it was a very gradual thing, but I ended up doing a complete 180 on my atheism in the course of about a year, year and a half and, uh, just meditating a lot. I have ever since. And, uh, then there, there are some, there are some much less pleasant aspects, aspects to my to my journey but i'd rather not go into extraordinary detail just for the sake of the interestingness of it of of the podcast here but um had about eight or nine years of really really hard times and feeling very distant from god and and uh, misaligned with things and uh, married a christian woman and about five months ago i accepted jesus and i no one was more surprised than me it was, it really snuck up on me, but it has been uh, wonderful. Like I, when I talk to, you know, my Buddhist friends about it, I say, it's like having a guru who's always right there. I don't have to like go to his ashram in Pune. He, I don't have to wait for him to talk to me. He's always right there. 
and I don't have to worry that he's been corrupted by some earthly spirit. He's got, you know, this divine presence and track record and, and feeling that is just incomparable. And so accepting Jesus has really taken a lot of the complication and confusion and sense of doership out of spirituality. And it's been uh, wonderfully productive, if not, you know, quite distressing to my Jewish family, probably. And, and to me, it's a, it's a challenge. It's, it's been a challenge on that sort of cultural level. But Jesus is the real deal, and uh, I, I just learned that recently. Well, you gave me so much to unpack here as a podcast host. I'm so excited. <laughs> I would like to go back. I want to talk about your accepting Jesus. But before we do that, I want to go back to sure. when you were an atheist, and you then decide that you're not an atheist anymore, or you're agnostic and you decide you're not agnostic, and, and you make that switch in a period of a year, you said. So what yeah. happened in that year for sure. you to accept God or find God or whatever it is yeah. in your words? So I was an atheist. I was an annoying, you know, Reddit style atheist before that was popular. Uh, and I would, you know, have arguments with Christians and was just super obnoxious and had no idea. But, uh, you know, uh, that that was... I, I get to excuse it by saying it was at least it was before it was cool. So <laughs> one of the things that that changed it was I read the book Radical Honesty when I was about 15. And if you haven't read Radical Honesty or heard of it, it's written by a psychotherapist who re recommends being radically honest. And of course, you, you balance that with being considerate for other people and whatnot. But the idea is you don't leave out any detail. You don't fudge things. You express your exact thoughts and intentions uh, at, in the moment. And what I realized when I started to practice this was that I was in high school at the time. Let's say I was like doing something mischievous and I got caught. I would tell the administrator, yes, I was doing this mischievous thing and I was expecting I would not get caught, but here we are, or something like that. I would just be like 100% transparent with my actual thoughts with this authority figure. And what the pattern was, was life would miraculously work out better than I could have planned or anticipated or schemed. There was just this mysterious aid to which truth came for me. I just got chills. Yeah, brother, I I know you feel it. And even in the in the deepest commitments of my atheism, I felt this recognition that truth is a force that will help you if you help it. There's this sort of mysterious thing that that truth is not just a set of words, it's a force that exerts something that organizes something that has some kind of life to it. So that was one of the first, you know, early kernels. And that gave me a lot of confidence to pursue things like meditation and self-inquiry with, um, with a lot of, of vigor and, and, uh, attitude. So, okay. What happens then you, what happens you start realizing, question. yeah. Yeah. Take us through the so, path. I guess I started experiencing synchronicities, just wild, wild coincidences and stuff. And at a certain point, I, I was meditating or just, just lying there, I guess. And I said to no one in particular, uh, no matter what the truth is, I want to know it. I don't, I don't care what the truth is. I just want to know what it is. I just kind of prayed it to nobody without any intention that it being a prayer. And uh, that's what it was. And that, that started this chain of coincidences and synchronicities that very gradually and gently invited me into the possibility of recognizing a spiritual dimension to the world, to recognizing God, things like that. And it took me a long time to even start saying the word God. I would mm -hmm. say consciousness. I would say the universe and stuff like that. Because I had I had been slandering God for like years by this point. It was just like humiliating to, to make a quick U-turn. Mm -hmm. But the, the reality of it was just that prayer, even as an atheist, uh, unlocked this very gentle sort of gravitational field that just sort of gradually and very much 
uh, with respect for my own limitations drew me into these these realizations and this openness. And then I think the big the biggest thing that you know kind of locked it in was I was reading a book that's actually an online textbook that I would totally recommend, by the way. It's called Course in Consciousness, and I think it's at courseinconsciousness.org or .com, and it's by a professor emeritus of psychology and from the University of Virginia called Stanley Sabatka. Anyway, read this. It's all online. It's free, and it basically lays out science from physics to quantum physics to psychology and consciousness and also uh what spiritual sages and stuff like that have reported and just ties it all together in this beautiful continuum from the easily observable in the external world to the difficult to observe in the internal world. It just ties it all together in this beautiful sort of gradient. And as I was reading these, I uh, read about Ramana Maharshi and his practice called self-inquiry, where you basically just sit and meditate and ask yourself repeatedly, what am I? And as you come to an answer, as you think, oh, it's, uh, I found a thing, you then say, oh, but if, if that's you, then who's noticing that? And you repeat this process. So you go deeper, deeper, who am I? What am I? And as I was doing this, I had, I was, I was liberated by this sort of beginner's mind of not having any expectations and all of a sudden I felt like just filled with spiritual air I felt like my body was transparent and when I took a breath the whole room filled with air and expanded and contracted with my breath and I opened my eyes and looked around and I felt this extraordinary peace and I felt waves of gratitude just burst forth out and the word gratitude just inserted itself into my mind and just overflowed. And it was just, it felt more real than reality. Like you can tell when you're not dreaming because you remember that when you were, there was a certain sort of hazy weirdness. Well, this feels more real than everyday life. And that was the moment that I went, all right, there's really something here. And uh, there's no going back now.